Hey, welcome back to True Moto Resto, and this is going to be episode seven of the Kawasaki ZX7 uh, restoration. I'm not even going to say what I'm uh, going to do this week uh, because every time I've said it, I've never gotten it done. So I'm just going to start picking away at things, and uh, we'll see what we uh, see what we can get through. Stay tuned. <music> Okay, so before I get into the next set of tasks on the ZX-7, I thought I would make a couple of comments around what I found the most challenging about this particular paint job. So this is the first uh, three color paint job I've done. I just set my own expectations, I think, on the amount of time it's gonna take to do it. it I was in the booth for 11 hours uh, yesterday and I knew it was gonna be an all day job. I just didn't realize it was gonna be an 11 hour all day job. So. There was basically uh, three coats of white on the tank and the side panels to get it to cover all of the uh, the primer and whatnot. And then there was two coats of pearl on the white. And then the, the whole masking escapade uh, had to start. And I would say with the masking, thank goodness for the templates that I made for the tank. Because they, they were... Um, you know, they were a godsend uh, having those on hand. I, there's no way with measurements and whatnot that I would have ever gotten those tank stripes uh, the way they should be. So that was a good call to make the templates. And I got caught out a couple of times. I had all the right tape. It was all body shop quality tape. But I'd, in a couple of spots, like when I did the blue, when I taped around the edge of the blue, there was a couple of spots where... I hadn't gone down and pushed the tape down tight enough. I was a little afraid because it was kind of fresh paint. That, you know, you leave it for an hour for the white to dry enough and then you can tape on it. But I guess I was a little tentative in pushing it down. And there was two spots where the blue just kind of, it was only like a pin. The, the shaft of a pin would have fit through the, the hole in the tape. And that was enough to kind of blow a little bit of blue into the white. So of course that meant then that we had to mask off the blue and use an airbrush just to kind of dust in over top with white again and then dust in the pearl. So that lengthened the whole process. Same thing happened for a slightly different reason um, on these panels where um, when I masked off the white down here, there's a kind of a, a bit of a dip to the panel. And when I taped it down, I, I kind of I started here and instead of gradually taping I, I wanted it to be straight so I pinned it at each end so that the tape line would be dead straight and then I pushed it down and what that did was it put tension on the tape so almost imagine if it was because this is dished here and it comes up at the top so you'd normally you would have like a little bit of a gap when you pull the tape tight and then I just pushed the tape down and it stuck the problem with that was once there was tension on the tape and then you get the solvents from the paint touching the tape the adhesive on the tape will want to release just because it's under tension and it did and it blew a couple of uh, spots of green again it kind of dusted green onto the white so then we were back to taping off the green re-blowing in the white a little bit with a little bit of pearl again so that kind of exacerbated the process um, <clears throat> i did get one tiny little run on my very first coat of white paint uh, down in this area somewhere um, but we just let it dry. Uh, I, I sanded it back out and then with the second and the third coats of, of white paint, that was no big deal. So uh, lessons were learned aplenty, uh, which is a good thing, on, uh, on masking. And then the other mistake I made was I put the green paint in the paint shaker for several minutes. It was fairly freshly mixed paint, but when I poured it into the, the paint gun, I didn't realize until after I started spraying that it was almost going on in like a translucent. You could see right through it. It just, I thought, man, this is never going to cover. And then when I went back to put uh, the next lot of paint in the cup and I gave it a stir and poured it in, I could see by the way it was sticking to the filter that uh, it hadn't been mixed properly on my first pass. So, uh, you know, lesson learned, leave it in the paint shaker for longer. And uh, yeah. Just, uh, you know, things you learn along the way. So 
all in all, it went very well. And for 11 hours in the booths in three colors and uh, you know multiple layers of layers of paint and pearl and this and that and the other thing, it went uh, it went really well. There's no dry spots. There are no runs. So all in all, um, I'm quite happy. All right, so. What's got to be done still? Uh, the forks have to be rebuilt. Uh, the brakes have to be redone. Uh, steering head bearings have to be done. Carburetors have to be rebuilt and cleaned uh, ultrasonically. And uh, once I get to the right point, the wheels are back on the bike and the swing arm is back on and whatnot, I'm going to have to modify slightly this uh, reproduction Hugger fender. This is not off a of 1990 because they weren't available, but they are available off a of 91, which is almost identical, with the exception that the I guess the part that it mounts to on the swing arm for this is uh, it's got a slight curve to it. All the mounting points are in the same places, but the but the profile of the swing arm is kind of kind of kind of bows here. So that means I'm going to have to at some point uh, cut. You see where I've got my pencil lines there. I'm gonna have to sh shave off some of the fiberglass and to some degree, this was just kind of a rough go. I'm gonna clean that off and do it again, but I'm gonna do it when the wheel's on the bike <clears throat> and I can ensure that I have the right clearance uh, and the right angle of the fender. Uh, but yeah, that has to happen. So uh, yeah, this is for a 1991 to 1995 from Moto Forza. Don't make them for the 90s, they don't make them for the 89s, but it's the closest thing I could get and by the time I'm done and it's all painted black, you will not know the difference. All right, so I'm just gonna start uh, unpacking these uh, genuine Kawasaki head bearings. I'm going to put the uh, the outer races in the freezer. Put them in the deep freeze for a few hours, but minus 20. Uh, that'll go in the freezer, and then I'll when, when I install it, I'll warm the upper headstock area so that'll press in uh, a lot easier. Okay, so the next step is to remove. Uh, the outer races from the upper and lower headstock area. So for that, I'm going to, first of all, I'll try to use this. I've used this quite a few times. It's just like a, uh, a pry bar. I can usually get in there far enough. Basically, you just got to catch the, uh, the inner edge of that bearing race. Flip it over and see if you have any better luck with the other side. If I can get this side out, maybe I can get more, more angle on it. Success, that one is out. <clears throat> I don't think I've ever had this much trouble getting a bearing race out of a headstock. All right, so this is where we start to have to get a little bit caveman on it, and this is not what this tool is meant for, but my dad made these probably 30, 40 years ago. Have a long extension Allen keys with a hex head on the top, and uh, I'm sure dad will roll over in his grave when he sees what I'm gonna do with this. Sorry, dad, needs must. He is no worse for wear. So the thing we got to do next, I guess, is to drive off this this bottom bearing here. Okay. 
So, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use my, my hand here. And basically what I'm doing is I'm using the, I'm gonna try to do it from the back side first, using this open area here, and then forcing that against my hand that has the bearing in, I'm just trying to scoop it in. It's full, now the idea, let's see how successful I am, is once you start forcing it in from the back, I would like to see it starting to come out top beautiful see that coming out of the, the top there now we got her I'm hearing you kind of hear and feel the tone change where you now got metal it's not moving anymore so you're starting to get a different sound okay so I've got my uh, bearing races out of the freezer I wrap them in this towel just so they stay a little colder while I uh, do the next stage. So I'm just gonna warm the headstock area a little bit uh, and then insert the new races using the old races and try not to get the, uh, the old ones stuck in there at the same time. So. Aluminum will sink the heat away pretty fast so it shouldn't do any damage to the paint. It's actually quite difficult to get the aluminum to heat up. There's just so much of it on one of these frames that it's doing pretty much nothing, so aluminum is not great for that. It just kind of sinks the heat away really, really quickly. So that's one. To uh, see if we can get it started. I'll try to get it to go in as straight as possible. Now, of course, I've gotten a little stuck on there. Okay, so for the, the remainder of it, I do have a, a bearing driver set. So I'm using a, I measured the race, the outer race that I'm pounding in, 52 millimeter. So that's what I'm gonna use. Okay, the next job is gonna be uh, rebuilding and refinishing these forks. So aside from the basics of uh, new fork seals, the other thing I have to do here, and you can kind of see on here, is that the the finish, the coating on these forks is basically gone. All down the sides here, it's kind of probably from years of road riding, whatever has, or somebody's used something on here to try to clean them up, and it's basically taken off the kind of the clear coated finish that was originally on here. So I'm going to, when I disassemble the forks, I'm gonna take um, take these off. I'm gonna strip the uh, the clear lacquered, clear coated finish off here, and then I will refinish. I'll re-give them a kind of like a brushed aluminum finish using a 3M or a Scotch Brite pad, uh, uh, lubricated with WD-40, and that will kind of kind of restore more of a factory sort of finish to it. I'll clean it all with uh, brake clean and acetone and whatnot, and then I should be able to uh, to clear coat it. Okay, so uh, fork disassembly, basically what I've done, I'm sorry, on the left fork, uh, taking the, uh, the pinch bolts out and the axle nut out. And now I've got to get the, uh, the damper rod bolt out of the bottom. So it's in there pretty tight. So I'm gonna see if I can use the, uh, the air impact gun to get that out. It's always easier, I think, to try to get those out before you take out the, uh, the damper rod and take the top cap off and all that kind of stuff. So, see what we can do there. Got it. I normally like to um, loosen off the uh, compression, the, sp uh, the spring preload, and the uh, sorry the spring preload and the damping before I undo the top cap completely. I did uh, loosen the top cap while it was still in the triple clamps. Just makes it easier to get that off. So now I'm gonna take the, uh, the top cap off and you just wanna make sure you haven't got your face. I don't wanna get my, uh, I wanna get this thing 
buried in my forehead. Sometimes they pop out with some force and other times it's, there we go. Uh, just, I try to just be careful when I uh, drain the oil before I turn this upside down to get everything out. Um, I want to make sure that there's nothing in there that's going to fall into the bucket and be kind of lost in this uh, giant pot of slop that I've got. I've got this kind of waste oil bin down here that I use and fishing stuff out of there is not not pleasant. Okay, so uh, I'm going to take this uh, little spring out. It sits on top of the, uh, the seal there. Why don't you take that out? Then you should be able to basically slide this, uh, use it like a slide hammer. And then she comes apart. Okay, so everything's been uh, disassembled. So I just basically, I just lay this stuff out. So I know which is left and which is right. Uh, the next job, as I said, is gonna be uh, strip cleaning these inside uh, and outside stripping them, refinishing them, and then once that's done and uh, they're dry and everything's ready to go back together, at that point, um, I'll remove the uh, bushings and the uh, seals from this, put the new ones on, and then uh, get them reassembled. Okay, so here's the process I'm using to uh, refinish these uh, lower fork tubes. It's starting to look pretty good. So first thing I did was used a chemical stripper because there's like a clear coat uh, on these. And I used a, uh, a medium grade scotch bright pad. Uh, where I get them, that's kind of like a, a brown color. It's just kind of what's left of it here. And then, uh, so I used the scotch bright pad to scuff off the clear coat after the uh, chemical stripper had done its thing. Um, once that was off, I wiped them down with uh, acetone. And then I use WD-40 and uh, a finer uh, grade, kind of the burgundy color, which is this one, scotch Bright. And you gotta remember uh, the whole time, whether you're stripping the clear coat or whether I'm stripping, or sorry, polishing with the scotch Bright, you, you have to go this way around the tube. You must never, Go this way if i go this way i'm going to end up with scratches that look really 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 bad and what i'm trying to do is to develop a finish that looks as close to the factory finish as i can get so we're getting very very close um <clears throat> what i'm going to try is just to put a little bit more of a shine on it and if it gets too shiny i'm just going to use a scotch bright again to knock it back a little bit but it could use to be just slightly more shiny so i'm going to use some uh, Autosol metal polish, polish a little bit of it up, <clears throat> buff it off and see how that looks and if I'm happy with that I'll keep going and then uh, if not I'm just gonna knock it back again with the uh, with the fine or scotch bright pad until I get the finish that I want. Once I've gotten the finish right uh, then I'll clean it with brake clean again, wipe it all down and then it can be clear coated. Alright so Here's the difference between autosol and uh, no autosol. So this part has only been done with the uh, scotch Bright. This has been done with the scotch Bright and the autosol. So that's a little closer to the, the finish that I'm looking for. So I'll continue on and do, uh, do the rest of this fork leg and also the other one. All right, so there's the uh, finished product before I clear coat it. I'm just gonna use a uh, Duplicolor engine enamel clear coat because it's fairly durable stuff. Um, should be should be fine for these fork tubes. So uh, that's the plan. We'll get it coated. Um, probably two coats. Shouldn't need too much. It's just so they don't uh, they don't tarnish. And then uh, we'll let that dry overnight. Okay. So there we are. Uh, I put three coats of clear on. And I think they're, they look pretty good. They're obviously, there's a slight difference in the finish from what you see here versus here because this this is kind of rough cast and then everything else is polished. That's just kind of the way they are from the factory. But, but yeah, it uh, looks a hundred times better than they did before. So I'm going to leave that overnight. 
let that dry properly and then uh, tomorrow we'll uh, we'll get after this and get it all reassembled with new seals i've got my seal driver set here and i've got my uh, fork bullets to go over the top of the forks to protect the seals i've got my rubber grease and uh, somewhere in this box are my fork seals Okay, so uh, I have my new fork seals laid out, all of the pieces uh, as they go on in order with the top sides all facing up. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to put my rubber grease on the inside of these seals so they're all ready to go. So there's the, uh, I put the bushing and the washer in. So now I need to drive, drive the bushing home. The next thing I'm gonna do is get the uh, correct size bullet. It's gotta be green. So there's my, uh, there's the correct bullet for that. So the idea here is it just, it just stops the uh, seal from getting damaged by the top of the, uh, the fork leg when you put it on. So I've used this, obviously I've used a lot of these before, so I'm just cleaning the crap off. And I will give these also a light smear of grease. Fork seal, make sure I got it the right way around. Closed close section with the stamping and the writing on the top. Particular seal drivers are, it's a, uh, it's a cheap set. They come with a, a whole pile of different inserts depending on what size fork uh, leg you use. that'll go in okay perfect clip is in last but not least the dust seal okay so uh before i go ahead here and put the damper rods back in i need to uh anneal these new crush washers for the bottom uh, damper rod bolt they're not going to be soft enough to conform well so i just heat these up till they're cherry red that'll Make sure that they're good and soft. Okay, so what I've done is I've separated um, the damper rod component. So basically I had the rod, I removed the spring, and I removed the, uh, the adjuster and the big washer that's on the top on both of them. So what I have to do now is I gotta put the damper rod back into the shock without the spring, then put the fluid in, Check the, I put about 445 milliliters in, check the airspace, which is, is supposed to be about 135 millimeters. <clears throat> and then once that's done, I can put the spring in and reattach the, uh, the adjuster and stuff to the top. So I'm starting off with uh, 450 milliliters of oil, which should be quite sufficient. And then if it's, uh, if it's too much, I'll draw some off with the uh, fork oil gauge. Okay. 
This is telling me that I've got too much in here, but I only put in the amount required if you basically rebuilt the fork. So I'll give it a few more pumps. So I pumped this up and down quite a few times and used this uh, air, hit airspace gauge and I ended up having to draw back out about 40 milliliters. So it was about just well, a little over 400 millimeters, milliliters went in. Make sure the top's at the top. Now I can put that back on. Just back up. These down properly once the uh, once they're back in the triple trees. For now, just need to get the caps on. Leak. Okay, so they're all back together. So I think that's going to be a wrap for this video. And uh, next video, I think uh, I'll start to put the bike back together, finally. I'm going to take the tires and the wheels in to get uh, reinstalled. And I'm just going to start putting the, the frame back on the engine. And we'll start to build the bike back up. And uh, at some point, I'll also have to uh, do the carburetor rebuild. But I think it's time to start putting your back together. So I'll see you in the next video. Thanks again for watching. And please like, share, subscribe. Very much appreciate it. Thanks.